everyone. Thank you so much for joining me again here at the Art Life YouTube channel. My aim here is to show you lots of different varying ways to have fun with art, either in the classroom or at home, and inspire you and give you ideas to be creative. Today, we're going to do some technical watercolour techniques and create an artwork that looks something like this. love teaching watercolors and you probably can tell that because I've done a lot of watercolor tutorials in the past so feel free to check those out if you would like some beginning steps to using watercolors this particular bird picture is a little bit more advanced we go over blending techniques working with wet on wet techniques as well as painting wet on dry techniques filling a space and working really neatly and adding details so this is a more technical watercolor task and I guide you along to create a beautiful bird picture just like this. So stay tuned, I'll show you how right now. This is a watercolour task and I'll be teaching you some different techniques using watercolours. So a palette of colourful watercolours is your main material you need for today. I'm going to be working on a canvas board that I've gotten from Zart Art. However, you could use some watercolour paper instead. You'll also need some clean water and a brush. And one extra thing you'll need is a grey lead pencil just to draw your image prior to painting. So gather your materials and let's get started. All right. So today the aim is to create a large bird that we're going to paint in watercolours. Now, obviously the first step would be to sketch or draw your image. Now, what's really important to note, and I'll do this on a separate piece of paper, is that when we're drawing, if you imagine this is the space here, you need to try to take up most of the page. If you are to draw just a really small bird on your paper or canvas, the composition isn't as effective as it could be. For example, you have your subject very tiny and that means that the background here is taking up too much space. So if you're wanting to do a small bird, I suggest you do lots of small birds like this so that your composition is filled and the viewer's eye moves around the page. But Today, what I want to encourage you to do is create a large bird. So if your paper is this big, you're going to try to create a bird that takes up majority of the page like this, meaning that the background is taking up a minority of the paper. So because we're using watercolours today, when we're drawing, we need to sketch extremely lightly. Watercolours are translucent, which means they are see-through. And if you draw in a really dark, sort of heavy way like this, you're going to see those lines. And it's going to make your artwork not look as neat as if you were to sketch lightly. So there's definitely a difference between drawing and sketching. Sketching uses small little lines that are light, they're thoughtful, and they can be rubbed out very easily if you're making a mistake. So I'm going to draw directly onto my canvas today. This is what I'll be using, but of course you could use watercolor paper if that's all you have. And the design of your bird is up to you. You might choose to have a bird sitting in which case it would look different to a bird that's flying with its wings out. Now we can, if you have a look at some bird images on the internet, that will help you to draw. I think it makes a lot of sense to draw from a picture rather than draw from memory. And so even now I have my computer open next to me and I'm having a look at an image of the type of bird that I'm wanting to depict today. So when it comes to drawing, it's important to simplify your image into simpler shapes. So that means that if I'm doing, say, the body of my bird, I'm actually going to do two birds today because I want to show you 
um, the difference between one sitting and one standing. So I'm going to do a sitting bird here. And if you consider its body, I'm sketching for myself now, just an oval shape. Now we also need a head shape. Again, sketching really lightly. You'll need a bit of a wing sort of shape. You could, obviously different birds have different shaped wings and, and things like that. So you would need to look at your image that you've chosen. It needs a tail. And then it'll have its, its feet here. It also has a little beak, of course. But this is my basic shape. When it comes to drawing a bird that is flying, I'll do this out here. Again, I'll need an oval for the body. We'll need a circle for the head. But its wings sort of come out like this. And its tail will be behind it. So I've given you two examples of birds here and it's, its feet will sort of dangle there. Now you may choose to do a composition like mine where you've got more than one, in which case you'll do them smaller. In the event that you're just gonna focus on one bird today, you will make them quite large in the middle of your page here. Now for now, this is the only detail you need with your pencil. We're gonna to try to fill in the rest with our watercolors. Now there's lots of different techniques I need to show you with watercolors. There's um, something called wet on wet or painting on dry. And it's really different depending on um, what stage of the bird you are doing. So grab some clean water. I'm gonna start with a bird just here. You need to choose your color scheme and I'm gonna do a realistic one today. And to start off with, just going to give my bird a bit of a an overall kind of color. I'm going to make this quite a watery color. You can see I'm adding quite a lot of water here, but I'm sticking within sort of the shape of my bird. This is a fairly advanced watercolour uh, tutorial. So um, if you would like to sort of get some basics prior to um, doing this task, I suggest you have a look um, at my previous videos. I do a lot of watercolour basics. Um, yeah, but this one's probably on the trickier side. So I've done a fairly basic color this is my first layer and you'll notice it's fairly watery so I've used a high level of water for this I've used a bit of a darker kind of uh, section here to show a bit of shadow which was my intention so there are areas that are darker so I'm going to create the shadow on the left hand side of my artwork suggesting that the light is coming from the top here all right, so I'm going to use sort of um, oranges and browns for this um, beautiful little bird here. I might use a little bit of blue too. So now that my background color is wet, we want to make sure it is still wet. You can apply more water um, if it has dried out. I'm going to add some orange to the belly here. Now, you'll notice that the color is spreading and that's what we want it to do. This is called wet on wet painting and the colors merge really beautifully. And that's what we're wanting. 
That's why we need sort of a canvas, something thick or some watercolor paper for this task because you do need to be able to add quite a bit of water and extra paint to it. So I'm gonna continue that to the head and sort of the belly. And I want a nice sort of blended line here. We don't want it to go just from orange to brown. You can see that it's sort of blending in a really natural sort of way there. That's not happening for you. If you're getting a really distinct line, just add a line of water and you'll notice that the colors will spread out a little bit better. For this brown to be wet, so I'm gonna add a layer of water there and I want some, some blue for my bird's tail here and hopefully you can see the effect a little bit easier with the blue. All right, notice it's quite a distinct line and I don't want that, I want it to blend. So I'm gonna add some water now and get those colors to really merge and uh, play together like that. I don't want this either. Can you see that that's not merged very well? I need to add some water there and you can see that the colors will start to, to blend more naturally. So this is just our second layer now. Our first layer was the, the browned under coating, I suppose. This is some blended color over the top. And once this dries, that's when we can create some details with a te technique called wet on dry. So we need to completely let that dry. I'm also not gonna do the beak or anything yet because I don't want the colors to merge, we're just doing the body. I'm gonna move on to my second bird now. All right, we're gonna start off and do a similar technique with my flying bird here. I'm just gonna add a really light color. Notice that even though I've sketched, you can still see my pencil marks. So I'll aim to try and get rid of those down the track. So you can have some areas a little bit on the darker side, which means I'm using quite a bit of the paint, you can see there. And then in other areas, it's pretty much just water. The idea with this is not to just purely color in. I'll show you what I mean. If I just use my paint and that's it, you know, looks fine, but there's no tone to it. There's no um, sense of value or lighting. And that's when the water sort of comes into play. If I can use areas with higher level of water means other areas have higher level of paint and it gives that change in color a darker area and a lighter area now we have two wings here but we want a distinction between the two of them at the moment they look like they're attached the way we do that is by adding tone as i was saying before can see that just having a little bit more pink there making this part of the wing darker it, it tends to separate them a little bit more which is what we want while I add in some of the colors I see in my photo for this particular bird So notice the colors will blend and bleed at the moment because my background's still wet. And that's okay. If it's doing something you don't really want it to do, you can always grab a tissue and dab the colors or you can sort of move them away with a bit of water. If you're finding the colors are just combining too much and going just a gross color, that's probably when you need the tissue to get rid of the color and sort of start again. Don't suggest you do that too many times though. The next thing I'd like for us to do is consider the background. So at the moment, obviously I've just got a very plain white background. We don't need to add a lot of detail, but we do need to add color. So before we add any other details, we're going to fill the background with a really lovely washy kind of 
green. That's what I'm choosing to do because I'm suggesting that these birds are in a tree. So I'm just going to use the different mixture of greens that I have to fill my background completely. Now I am also using a lot of water. That's what makes it sort of washy like this. If you just use one green, it will look quite flat. So, you know, really practice your blending skills now. So for example, in this section, I'm, I'm adding some water to my light green and my turquoise here, making them kind of combine, doing a bit of a, a dabby sort of technique like this to suggest, you know, the, the leaves of a tree. Try not to overwork each area it can the colors can mix together um, and then you don't end up with that color variation so add a little bit and move down the yellow also looks really nice and combines well in this situation with the green little highlights don't forget your water Coming up to my bird here, I need to be quite careful to get this edge really clean. I don't want to paint over the top of my bird there or take away from it, just up to it. So, to recap what we've done so far, we've painted a layer for each bird, then a second layer over the top using blending and allowed that to dry. We've then covered the entire background in a green sort of tree-like background to fill the white space. Now that everything is dried, we're able to do our details and it's important to have a detailed small brush for this part or something with a fine tip like the brush I have right now. So the types of details that can be added are little outlines I guess and see that now when I'm painting over the top my colors are not blending now that's happening because it's now dry so we're painting wet paint onto a dry background and that means that we can add details like I'm doing now my paint is not watery I've not made it watery on purpose because I want that crisp detailed line this part of the task really does take quite a lot of concentration. I suggest that you have a photo of the bird that you're trying to depict in front of you so that you can notice and look at its details. The types of details, you know, I'm wanting to add here obviously are these lines on the tails and the wings that this particular bird has. And it just makes it stand out from the background as well. Paint it really lightly with a high density of water first, um, just to make sure that you're happy with what it looks like. And then you can lock it in with a darker color. I really hope you found creating your birds really therapeutic and relaxing. It's all about layering your watercolors, 
adding details once the watercolors have dried and creating an overall composition that works together really nicely. Don't forget to sign your name down the bottom and I hope you enjoy the task. So it's as simple as that. I really hope you've been able to create an artwork that you're really proud of and that illustrates really good watercolour skills. Feel free to tag me in any photos that you've created of your artwork at Art Life Art Lessons on Facebook or at artlife.melb on Instagram and follow my socials there. As well as like this page and subscribe below and ring the bell if you would like to get notifications of any future videos. Thanks again for joining me and I hope you've enjoyed this watercolour task.